It's creepy season. North Carolina Zoo, Zoo Adventures. Steve's going to be in front of the camera for a while. Megan behind. Vultures visiting. We thought we'd do a really fun episode today. Show you some creepy stuff from non-creepy animals. And some non-creepy stuff from what some people say are creepy animals. We're going throughout the entire park today. We can't wait to share the creepiness with you. So, creepy stuff, kinda. We're approaching the Halloween event. We're showing you a beautiful, sort of, elephant foot. Why elephant feet and how does it work into creepiness? Well, believe it or not, there's a fat pad kind of at their quote unquote heel. That's not quite the right way to say it, but in the back of that circle foot is a bunch of fat. And get this, they can hear with that. Yeah, well, maybe hearing isn't quite the right way to say it. They can sense vibrations through the ground with that fat in their foot. That's kind of creepy in a elephantine sort of way. So yeah, but what they're sensing are actually infrasound, infra low, very deep sounds that elephants can make that travel through the ground and that elephants can sense literally miles away. So we thought, yes, elephants are amazing and awesome, but they got kind of creepy feet or amazingly creepy. How's that? Elephant feet. What about you, Megan? What do you think? Um, I think this is super awesome. And look how, look at the little toenails too. Yeah. See those little toenails? You can see them there. Our, did you know our keepers actually trim the toenails? They trim the nails? Yeah. Really? They trim the foot pads. Wow. That's crazy. That is kind of crazy. Um, What's that? Also, What's that? just for extra cuteness. I don't know who that is. We have a couple of uh, very hungry ladies out here early in the morning. Both of them have lovely piles of hay. Have they stole the hay? Um, but here probably. But here did. But here's uh, on the left. Yep. But here's on the left. Yep. Right there drinking. Yep. And um, yeah, she's usually the one who goes around first thing in the morning or when keepers put hay out and collects all of it and makes a big pile. Gets the it gets the prime bits of hay. She is. All yeah. right. Well, it's kind of nice of her to show us how she can get a drink as well. Remember that trunk is not the nose. Since she demonstrated that, it's not their nose, it's their nose and upper lip kind of combined. So nope, they can't drink through it, but they can pull moisture, water, up into it and spit it into the mouth. Maybe that's kind of creepy too. Snot water. Ew. What do you think? Yeah, gross. Wow, this, this looks like a nice home for a little creepy crawly family here but they're not creepy. Yeah, they're neat looking. They almost look like walking blueberries. They are crawling though. They are crawling. This is a death feigning beetle. Ooh. And we thought that'd be kind of a cool behavior. That's kind of creepy on this fun episode for y'all. <laughs> be moving around. What you got? Uh, I need to feed them. Oh, you need to? <gasps> Yes. Ooh. They're gonna get a fresh salad. Fresh salad. Digital See, friends. That's Who wants a not fresh creepy. salad? Right? Not creepy at all. And on that fresh salad as a topping is a yeah. freshly dead cricket. What a great meat. Fresh. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> 
A nice freshly dead cricket. You said oh, freshly dead cricket. Yeah, you don't want to get one that's Fresh too salad. dead because then it's too dry it out and they don't want to eat I it. prefer bacon bits. Yeah, yeah well, same. I mean, it's like a bacon bit. It's got lots of protein for them. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> they are omnivores, so they will eat mostly vegetation, but they'll eat other dead bugs. Oh, they okay. can be a decomposer as well. Gotcha. Well, that's kind of cool. Death um, feigning beetles. want to see if they will do the... Uh, feigned behavior. You think they might? I'm not sure. The last time that we had to move these guys, they really didn't. But we can try and see. Okay. Um, let's see this one. I imagine they're used in education programs. They're probably used to being around people and all. So maybe not. But let's see what happens. Well, what a great <laughs> shot. Keep a cat with us today. Like, wait a minute. Where am I? Oh, walking blueberry. Okay. Well, no. <laughs> well, the, but they uh, will. They'll, shot. they'll pretend to be dead. Mm -hmm. um, in the desert, um, it's you want to have all of the protections that you can get. Sure. And uh, you don't want to be eaten, so you mm -hmm. pretend to be dead. And usually, animals won't eat something that's dead because they want something a little bit fresher that has some moisture has to the moisture it. Moisture in the desert. What um, a great adaptation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. But they're kind of used to us, so. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Death right. feigning beetle. Not feigning death to moth, but a cool behavior that could be considered a little creepy. Love it. Yeah. Salad with a fresh cricket <laughs> on top. Interesting. All right. Fun. Thank you, Kat. You're welcome. Creepy on this creepy episode. We can't really de creepyify that one. Mm -hmm. That is the bugle of the wapiti, the American elk. Hear that sound at this time of year. I really enjoy talking with you all a lot, but we couldn't stand out here forever. So that's a recording <laughs> of an elk. And we thought it'd be really cool to share that with you. Uh, again, some creepy stuff, but you're like, wait a minute, that's a beautiful animal, but that's a creepy sound. It's so Just fluffy. the way it Look is. At this. Yeah, they can be fluffy. Beautiful. And they're getting fluffier and fluffier with the winter as it approaches. But what a crazy noise that was. That was the bugle of the wapiti. Again, the American elk. That's how he is proclaiming his territory, telling other wapiti, stay away. This is my space. So giraffe, creepy, watch this tongue. Yeah, covered in slime. That slime is really important though, because it protects their tongue as they're eating thorny. I'm sorry, I was a little slow on that one. This is turbo, <laughs> by the way. Hi, turbo. Oop, there's a little piece. It protects their tongue from the thorns of many of the trees that they're munching on. I got two more pieces. How about that? Now Megan's going to have to feed you, or I'll have to hold it. So Megan's not going to feed you from a distance there, Turbo. But yeah, so the, so that the tongue, although coolly creepy, is still kind of creepy when it has... <laughs> can you get that? Can you make you work at it? Can you make you work at it a little bit? But the other kind of weird thing about them, sorry, Turbo, I'm a little slow for you. There's, we have some amazing volunteers behind me going, Steve, make it a little quicker, do a little quicker. Oh, no. um, <laughs> she's got some, Where? Megan has some. What are those things on his head? That's another reason we want to talk to you about this. I'll back up. We too close? A little bit funny. Oh, a little funny. the camera a little funny? funny. No I got you then, I can reach to you. But those things on top of his head, they're not antlers. They're not horns. They're ossicones. And if I've done my job, you can see the word at the bottom of the screen right now. 
So those ossicones are really important. Same kind of reason that giraffe or other animals have horns and antlers. But this gentle giant is a crazy fighter. Males establishing dominance using those ossicones. They thrust and push and, and literally crash their heads against each other into the neck. There you go. Are you feeling a little better? Is, a, is the mean old camera a little further away now? But how's that for an amazingly cool animal with some kind of creepy stuff at this season? Thank you very much, Turbo. Also, Turbo has bat, a bat signal mm -hmm. and a bite mark as some of his markings. So he's got like the... They like, they like the volunteers more than us. Well, I wonder why. The bat. So if you're ever looking to identify a Turbo here. Yep. He's got those two did things. You get, did you get it? I got the bat one. You got the bat one? Yeah. And then the other side looks like two bite marks. Cool. So, yeah. So who are you? I'm Debbie. This is Dandy. <laughs> Hi, Dandy. Hi. Who are you? And I'm Mark. Mark. Love it. This is great. And I'm Debbie. I'm not going to forget you. <laughs> I'm Debbie, you? Debbie also. Hello, Debbie. Awesome. You all should be highlighted. Thank you so much for volunteering your time and being with us. Mm -hmm. And I bet you right now, I bet you $1,000 right now, there are hearts, loves, likes, and smiles <laughs> coming from our digital friends to you all, many of our amazing volunteers here at the North Carolina Zoo. So we can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you for letting us come up and visit with Turbo. We didn't mean to make you kind of creepy, Turbo, but hey. We still love is. you. This is very true. Not creepy. Stop it. <laughs> Not creepy. The Madagascar hissing cockroach. Amazing detail. You can see those black holes on the side. Spiracles are what those are called. Spiracles. That's where the sound comes from. That hissing sound that the Madagascar hissing cockroach makes. But they do a really important job, y'all. They're eating that dead and decaying material that falls to the forest floor in Madagascar. And a lot of animals do that job. So, yeah, I get it. It's a roach. But they do some amazing stuff for us where they're from. Look at that amazing face. We have a wonderful assistant today. Keeper April is handling the cockroach for us. Look at that. And right underneath that, you can see the face. The face is underneath the top of that. Oh, nice, great shot. I have to say it. There you go. And everybody reaches for the radio to turn it down quickly. <laughs> but we wanted to make sure that we shared an animal that has a creepiness to it. But wow, if they're gonna be that decomposer, getting rid of all that decaying and rotting material, pretty important job. So not so creepy is the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Vampire bats, how cool is that? One of the most amazing thing about vampire bats, they will actually foster, they'll adopt other babies. So pups, so mom flies off and doesn't make it back. She left her baby behind. Other moms will adopt those pups. What an amazingly uncreepy fact about an animal that a lot of people find kind of creepy. So it's awesome to be able to do that. Who do we have to thank for the shot? Keeper Kim. Keeper Kim was in actually feeding the bats. There's the fresh blood. And she said, I can flash a light real quick for you. And we said, ah, awesome, we'll take it. So as we try to uncreepify the vampire bat, that was awesome to be able to show you that amazing shot in the corner. And it's true. They will adopt pups that need help surviving. One mom doesn't survive, they'll adopt that pup. A couple other things that makes them uncreepy is in their spit. What? Isn't spit kind of creepy? Yeah. But it's not. With a vampire bat, they make a little tiny cut, as I'm sure all of y'all know. They start lapping up the blood. 
as you probably know. But there's a really cool material. It's a protein in their blood called Draculin. Ooh. Right? Draculin. Draculin. It's a protein in the blood that acts as an anticoagulant. That means it keeps the blood from clotting. It's a really cool fact. The neat thing, we humans are learning about that Draculin and using it in medicines for us to keep our blood from clotting when necessary, like during surgeries and such. Um, yep. This friend right here is walking. They're climbing. They are. Fun fact. He's going in the dark. They can walk. The only bat that can walk. They can actually take off from the ground. It's true. They can jump up from the ground. The only bat that can walk on the ground. Too bad Wendy Foley's not with us anymore. She loves van the bats in general. Vampire bats are one of her favorites. Wendy, shout out to you. Sharing vampire bats and trying to decreepify a somewhat creepy animal. Beautiful little waterfall here. Yeah, I know it's doing creepies and crawlies and not so creepies and not so crawlies. We started on the waterfall, but look at this. No, 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 it's not real. This may be where the mythology of the Cyclops comes from. Does it recognize it? The single-eyed cyclops, one eye right in the middle of the forehead. Is this a cyclops skull? Or not? Is this a cyclops skull or not? What do you think? Would it help if I told you cyclops aren't real? Oh, that helps. <laughs> that helps. So it is a cyclops skull because they all died. They're not extinct. They, they oh. never existed. Oh, okay. Never. See, there's a there's a fine line there. Mythology. Yeah. yeah there you go. Oh, okay. This digital friends is actually the skull of an elephant replica. And that hole you see, trunk. Right. That's where the trunk would come into the skull. So, boom. But when people millennia ago saw this what that doesn't look like an elephant at all and lo and behold a myth was created to describe what they found elephant skull or cyclops your call this is a desert hairy scorpion makes sense what you see the color Okay, camouflage, sandy brown, looks great. Has those pincers, has the stinger for a tail, is a venomous animal because of the stinger, but they have a very unique adaptation. Check this out. Can you see that bluish green color? It's under a UV light. So you see part of the animal's kind of that really neat bluish color. That part is under the light. They actually fluoresce. They've got a bioluminescence about them. The color is found in their exoskeleton, the external skeleton of this invertebrate animal without a backbone in the vertebrate. Why does it bioluminesce? Uh, yeah, we're not sure. But it's kind of cool to be able to share that with you with this desert hairy scorpion. Creepy? Not creepy? Decreepification? Make sure you always get all of the facts before you make your decisions. 
Some creepy animals, pretty uncreepy. Some not creepy animals, maybe some creepy facts. So learn it all before you make your judgments. Your Zoo Adventures team today, Steve was in front of the camera. Who's behind the camera? Megan. It's great to see you Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. We can't wait to see you again. Stay safe, y'all.